The Gospel of John, yes. chapter 4. The Gospel of John, chapter 4. And we want to begin reading at verse 25. I want to thank Brother Cliff Smith for singing for us this morning. I want to thank the men of God for leading us in worship today. Yes. So John chapter 4, verses 25 through 29. And uh, I'm not going to read from the RSV as stated, but instead I will go to the New International Version. Here now, the word of the Lord from John 4 and verse 25. The woman said, I know that Messiah called Christ is coming. When he comes, he will explain everything to us. Then Jesus declared, I, the one speaking to you, I am he. Just then his disciples returned and were surprised to find him talking with the woman. But no one asked, what do you want? Or why are you talking with her? Then leaving her water jar, the woman went back to the town and said to the people, Come see a man who told me everything I ever did. Could this be the Messiah? And this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God you with me and let's pray. God, we just want to say thank you. Thank, thank you, Lord. Lord. Thank you for another chance to praise your holy name. Yes. God, we just want to say thank you. Thank, thank you, Lord. Thank you for another chance to yes. worship you. Yes, yes. God, we just want to say thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord, that you are here with us yes, to bless us and to heal us. Yes, Lord. Now, Lord, this is your time. We consecrate this time to you. Take over, Lord. Yes, take over Lord. the preacher, take over the pulpit, take over the pronouncements, and take over the viewers. And let your word go forth like never before. Yes, Lord. Let it heal, save, deliver, and set free. Yes. Yes. For Lord, we know that in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. And that is that same word that we preach yes. right now, the word of our Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. So take over, Lord. This is your moment. Right. Glorify and magnify yourself. Pierce the unbelief, Lord. Pierce the, 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 the worldliness, Lord. Pierce the lethargy. Pierce everything until you get to the heart of the matter. Right. This is our prayer. In the name, above every name, the mighty master's name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we pray God's people say. Amen. Amen. Look at your neighbor. Tell him, thank God you're here, neighbor. Thank God you're here. Neighbor. Tell him, you look better on Sunday. You look better on Sunday. Amen. So tell him, you are always be here on Sunday. Always be here on Sunday. So you look good as you can. So you Tell them, neighbor, neighbor, there is a word from the Lord. There is a word from the Lord. And the word of the Lord this afternoon. The word of the Lord this afternoon. It stays saying. It stays saying. In a crazy world. In a crazy world. Part two. Part two. Amen. Shake the hand. Amen. Then look at somebody else. Don't sit down. Oh, don't shake the hand. This is way back. My forgot. It's COVID time. Look at somebody and say, neighbor. Neighbor. Thank God you're here. Thank God you're here. Tell them you're important to God. You're important to God. And you're important to me. And you're important to me. Tell them, neighbor. Neighbor. There is a word from the Lord. There is a word from the Lord. And the word of the Lord this afternoon. The word of the Lord this afternoon. Is staying sane. Is staying sane. In a crazy world. In a crazy world. Part two. Part two. Amen. Amen. Tell them believe and receive. Believe and receive. You may take your seats. Amen. Uh, stay sane in a crazy world, part two. Uh, part one was last week. And last week, uh, uh, I brought forth the fact that they, these are times of mental distress. Yes. These are times of mental disease. Yes. These are times of mental breakdown. Uh -huh. This COVID has really, really changed everything. Yes, sir. And one of the things that it has done is it has produced uh, uh, a generalized mental condition across the world. Right. Over 670,000 people dead, millions more sick, our country divided, uh, over wearing masks. Uh, I tell you something, something has really shifted. Uh, companies have gone under, but people have gone under also. And we, uh, we said last week, should be concerned about the prevention of mental distress 
as well as the promotion of mental health. Mm -hmm. Are you all listening to me? Yes. We should be concerned about the prevention of mental distress, mental dis-ease, uh -huh. and the promotion of mental health. Yes. We shared the last Sunday that the church is a mental health clinic yes. where the divine therapist, the Lord Jesus Christ, works on us yes. through our songs, uh -huh. through the scripture, yes. through prayer, yes. through giving. Because if you don't give, you can't be spiritually healthy. Through meditation and through fellowship, the Lord uses all these to promote our mental well-being. So I want to encourage you today, as I did last week, to work to strengthen your spiritual life. Keep a consistent prayer schedule. Pray without ceasing, the Bible says. Keep a consistent relationship with the Bible. Reading, studying, and memorizing. Stay connected to your family and friends, but especially to those believers that God has put into your life to encourage and uplift you. Yeah. Today, I want to go further into this theme of preventing this mental disorder and promoting mental well-being. And I want to deal with a number of difficult issues. First among these, someone asked after they heard me preach, if someone asked me, should I as a Christian, as a child of God, go to a therapist? Are there times when even a Christian needs a therapist? I would say yes. Uh, uh, it can be very helpful. A trained therapist, a psychologist, a psychiatrist, a social worker, uh, a licensed counselor can be very helpful. Reverend Calvin Presley, uh, uh, when I was called to be the pastor, put me in a therapy class for a whole year. And without that class, I am sure I would have I'd collapsed or quit. Uh, but I learned many things in that class. One of the things I learned is how to avoid mental distress right. and promote mental well-being. Well, can I go ahead and tell Preach, you? Preach, uh, sometimes you just need to talk to someone. Yes. You can't figure everything out yourself. Yes. Have you ever been getting dressed and then found out that the way you thought you looked wasn't actually how you look? Uh -huh. Something was off. You had on thousand dollar clothes, but you still had something off. That's you right. couldn't see it. It might have been behind you. That's right. It might have been uh, underneath your eyesight. But someone told you, hey, 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 you all dressed up, but fix this. That's right. It's like that with mental issues. Sometimes uh, a therapist can see things you can't see. That's right. And they can help you in areas where you need help. Uh -huh. Well, you have to find the right therapist. You have to find a, a therapist or a helper that is sympathetic to your faith. Some therapists are hostile to religion and you should avoid uh, that. You should avoid those therapists. Uh, sometimes a woman might find another woman to be more suitable than a man. Yes. There are other cases where a woman might not want to talk to another woman. She might want a man. It depends on your situation and your circumstance. Uh, if a man went to a therapist because he had issues with his mother, he didn't know who the therapist was, and then the therapist looked just like his mother. That might not be the best to help him. Oh, y'all don't want me to go there. Uh, there are different things that make some therapists right for you and some therapists wrong for you. Language barriers, gender barriers, ethnic barriers. Some, some of you all are so militant out there, you don't trust any white people. <laughs> oh, help me, hold on. Oh, I, I don't know who you are, but you're out there. <laughs> and uh, you might need a therapist of your own race and ethnic group. Amen. There are class barriers. Mm -hmm. uh, one therapist uh, might be better than another, and uh, you might rule out some therapists for your problems. Mm -hmm. But find one that suits you, find one that fits you. Right. When you are looking for a therapist, ask them about their training approach. Mm -hmm. What did I say? Ask them about their training approach. Uh -huh. uh, are you going to see a uh, psychoanalysis uh, uh, counselor or practitioner? Or are you dealing with someone that is a behavioral uh, therapist? Uh -huh. Behavioral therapy mm -hmm. uh, coming from B.F. Skinner. Uh -huh. Are you dealing with a Rogerian therapist? Or are you dealing with somebody in gestalt psychology? Are you dealing with uh, someone that's in reality therapy? Uh, 
uh, founded by the late great Dr. William Glasser, or are you dealing with somebody in another school? Ask your parents, and sometimes medical personnel, you know how doctors can be, some doctors are arrogant. Mm -hmm. Helpers can be arrogant too. Mm -hmm. But ask them, well, what, 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 where, what are you, where are you coming from? What's your training? What, what type of uh, uh, therapy do you do? Mm -hmm. uh, just like if someone's going to give you some medicine, and I do believe that there are times uh, when your mental state has agitated you so much in your body that you need medicine to help straighten out your mind. Uh -huh. I do believe that. Now, I know we as black people, we're highly suspicious and we have a right to be. Uh, but there's sometimes when we've been down so long that the chemical balances of our body, our hormonal structures in the secretion within our body are off and that they need to be readjusted medically. And so I do believe there are times when uh, a, a psychiatrist usually does that can be very helpful. But you have the right to ask them, what is your training? What is your approach? Where are you coming from? Right. You can get some idea of the differences in the different schools I just named on Wikipedia. It's not that hard. Right. You, 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 if you're dealing with psychoanalysis, you want to know something about Sigmund Freud, go to Wikipedia and start there. If your uh, therapist is a behaviorist, you want to know something about B.F. Skinner. If your therapist is a Rogerian, you want to know about Carl Rogers. Yes. If you're studying this talk psychology, you want to understand the German school. If you're studying reality therapy, you want to know about William Glasser. Uh, years ago, in the Deacon training class, I had some of the uh, leaders in the class studying these very psychologists. Uh, so that they can know something about the different schools of psychology. You, you, you can look that up on your own. That's something you're able to grasp. I want to tell you, though, uh, there is an area of therapy called noenthetic counseling. Everybody say noenthetic. Noenthetic counseling. Noenthetic counseling, unlike those I just mentioned, is counseling that is solely based upon the Bible. Mm -hmm. uh, we had a, a deacon here, Deacon Harold Green. He was a very able and capable lay therapist. Yes. And we studied uh, psychology together so we could do uh, group sessions in the church. And he is the one who first brought this to my attention, no empathic counseling, uh, counseling that's only based on the scripture. And I have found that to be very helpful also. Amen. I say it just so you can, in your study, so you can learn about that. I also want to tell people that sometimes one of the most helpful things is a support group. A support group is a group of uh, non-professionals uh, who are just regular people who have had some training in helping disciplines. Uh -huh. uh, you've heard of uh, 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 support groups, they are non-profit. You've heard of Alcoholics Anonymous. Yes. That is a support group. It is what's called a 12-step program. Yes. Uh, developed by a man who was an alcoholic and the Lord brought him out of that. He developed 12 steps and a group structure and a meeting structure and an organization structure that has proven very effective in helping alcoholics. Uh -huh. Out of that came Narcotics Anonymous, mm -hmm. another 12-step program. And I want to thank God. We had two of our members. They're supposed to be anonymous, so I won't call their names. Okay. Amen. We had two of our members who years ago came to me and said, Pastor, uh, in the 90s, the crack epidemic was eating this community up. And they said, Pastor, we need to have Narcotics Anonymous. We need to have a chapter in the church. I said, what is that? And they gave me a presentation. And it was so good, I had them come to the deacons. And for many years in the church, we had... Uh, uh, the largest and the second largest uh, Narcotics Anonymous right downstairs in our fellowship hall. Amen. There are many other organizations that are self-help. Another big one is Gamblers Anonymous. Yes. Uh -huh. Now that the government has taken over gambling from the mafia, yes. oh, mm -hmm. don't yes. 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 at the end of the day, the biggest gangsters is the government. Yes. Yes. Right. But now that the government has taken over gambling from the mafia, many people find that they have an addiction to gambling. Yes. I had never been to Atlantic City until a few years ago, and I was taken there by a preacher. I won't call his name. Hallelujah. Because 
Uh, he didn't want to take me to Atlanta. Well, he took me to Atlanta City to the boardwalk. And I said, well, is that the casino? He said, yes. I said, let's go to the casino. He said, what? I said, let's go. I've never been in the casino. He said, you never been in the casino? I said, no, not this one. Hey, man, I was down south in the casino. Uh -huh. And so we was in Atlanta City. And to my surprise, I don't know what I thought I was going to see in Atlanta City, but all I saw was senior citizens. Uh -huh. <laughs> And some of them couldn't, they told them they didn't even know you were walking past. And uh, it was really something. <laughs> I've never seen this now. I've never been there. I haven't yet been in Las Vegas. I'm going out there. One of my godchildren is out there. So I'm going out there. But I heard that some people go early in the morning and stay all day. Mm. All day. Camping. Mm -hmm. I've heard there are people that wear diapers. That's right. They don't want to get up. Y'all don't want to get up. Y'all don't want to get up. Y'all don't want to get up. And you know what? Anything that you do can become an addiction. Yes. Gambling can become. Alcohol. Right. Drugs can become. Right. Watching TV can become an addiction. Your television show, eating, yes. can become an addiction. Wow. Sex can become an addiction. There are people who are actually sexual addicts. And these support groups can be very helpful. Uh -huh. And I encourage you, if you're wrestling with a problem, um, not only are there support groups, there are support groups for the families of alcoholics. Uh -huh. There are support groups of people who have been sexually abused. Mm -hmm. uh, there are support groups of people who have been in families of sexual abuse. Right. And I encourage you, if you are suffering, to find a support group to uh, let some people help you with your issue. Mm -hmm. There are organizations of support groups. One I want to mention because in my personal experience, I have seen its effectiveness is the National Alliance on Mental Illness. Mm -hmm. It's called NAMI, N-A-M-I, the National Alliance of Mental Illness. And uh, those of you that have been paying and you take notes during the sermons, write this down, NAMI, N-A-M-I, because I know somebody in your family has problems with mental illness. Yes. As a matter of fact, you might be the one. <laughs> All right? And we laugh, we laugh because it's uncomfortable. All of us are only healthy on a continuum, more or less. But if you're dealing with somebody in the family that has mental issues, don't ignore it. No. Don't sweep it under the rug. Call NAMI, N-A-M-I. Look them up on the web and get resources and directions for your help. There are many online groups and hotlines now that help people struggling with different issues. I want to call out uh, one, two, three, four, five major ones. Number one, the National Suicide Prevention Hotline. If someone feels suicidal, 24 hours a day, at any time, they can call the National uh, Suicide Prevention Hotline at 1-800-273-8255. 1-800-273-8255. If someone is in a, in a situation where you have experienced domestic violence, uh, uh, your partner, your husband, or your wife has uh, uh, beaten you, or there's emotional abuse. Sometimes, most often, it's men beating women, but there are men who are beaten up by women. Yeah. Oh, y'all don't want me to tell you. Yeah. There is a national domestic violence hotline, 1-800-799-7233. Three three one eight hundred seven nine nine seven two three three. There is a national sexual assault hotline in cases where there is an assault or a rape. There is a hotline where you be totally anonymous, twenty four hours, seven days a week. The national sexual assault hotline one eight hundred six five six four six seven three. And if someone is struggling with sexual abuse, if someone has, has been raped, and rape is a crime. Whenever a rape occurs, I encourage people to call the police. Mm -hmm. Whether it was somebody in my family, call the police. Amen. It was somebody in the church, call the police. That's right. It was somebody on my job, call the police. Rape anywhere and everywhere is a crime. That's 
that should be reported. Amen. But once the reporting uh, goes, the person still needs some support. You can call the National Sexual Assault Hotline, 1-800-656-4673. Now, because of the prevalence of cell phones, there is a text, uh, a crisis text hotline. If you are in any kind of mental crisis, you can text H-O-M-E, home, to 741-741 and receive a text with somebody helping you. It's called the crisis text line. And I just found this out uh, preparing for this sermon. Uh, all you gotta do is text H-O-M-E to 741-741 and they will respond to your crisis. Now, if you want to find another hotline for a problem that I have not mentioned, uh, go to www.pleaselive.org. Uh, www.pleaselive.org. That is an online source that tells you uh, hundreds of hotlines in your area that can help you. W-W-W-P-L-E-A-S-E-L-I-V-E dot -E org. Yes. Oh, can I go ahead and talk? Oh, really? I want to get in depth because sometimes uh, we're in church and we're praising God, but we are dealing with very, very heavy mental issues that are not always solved in the service. Uh -huh. Did you all hear what I said? Yes. Sometimes, hallelujah, the Lord Jesus had to heal a man too. He healed him, he touched him, but he had to touch him twice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we have to come back to a situation again and again and again. Now we sing a song, every round goes higher and higher. Mm -hmm. But when you have a problem, every hurt can get deeper and deeper. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll go ahead and tell you. And what we gotta be able to do is work with all of the levels of a deep problem. Hallelujah. The Bible said deep calls unto deep. God is able to go deep and God is able to go up high. Yes. And I encourage people, when you deal with the issue, when you deal with an addiction, when you deal with a problem, when you deal with something that is making you unhealthy mentally, to find uh, support. As a matter of fact, you need what is called a support team. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Look at your name, point to tell them you need a support team. You need a support team. Support team. Look in the mirror and tell somebody you need a support team. You need a support team. A support team is people you can talk to when you need help. Amen. I want everybody to exercise. Right now, who are the people I talk to when I need help? Mm -hmm. And if there's nobody, I want you to begin with these hotlines and support groups that I laid out. There are people who will be there for you when you are in trouble and you're in need. That's your support team. And God has given us people to be on our support team. All of the deacons and ministers here have had some training in counseling. Now, as I was working on this, I was reminded of the fact that that counseling, that training needs to be updated. But every member of our church has a deacon. And you can speak with your deacon, or you can speak with any other deacon, or you can speak with anybody you feel comfortable with in the church. You can also speak to me, but sometimes people get upset because if you call and you want to speak to me, there's always a list. And the only thing I can do, being one person, is take those who come first and serve them first. And sometimes there are things that in the church nobody else can do but me. And so I have to do those things. I might not be able to get to you right away. That's why we have a system where you can always call your deacon. All right? So, uh, uh, and even when you talk to me, sometimes we might go as far as we, as far as I think we can go, I might refer you to a therapist. And I referred somebody to a therapist once they said, what, you sick of me? And uh, I said, no, it's not that I'm sick of you, it's just that you need more in-depth help than I'm able to give. Amen. You need to continue working on this issue beyond what I can do. The wise person always understands their limits. And there's only so much I can do. When it comes to being a pastor, I'm a generalist. I deal with a lot of different kinds of things. But sometimes you need a specialist. Somebody says specialist. Specialist. And uh, a therapist specializes in a certain area. Mm -hmm. But I want everybody to be open to being able to allow people to help you with your mental health. 
If you feel you're dealing with the issue that's bogging you down, if you feel you're dealing with the issue that's hurting you mentally, don't just deal with it on your own. Find someone you can talk to. Find a therapist. Yeah. Go to a hotline. Call a number and reach out to someone. Yeah. And I'm a living witness that you reap what you sow. If you reach out, God will send someone to help you. Somebody. Can I go ahead and talk? Come on. Yeah. Uh, now, uh, I want to say that uh, the Bible does not use the word therapy. The Bible does not use the word therapist. The Bible does not use the word counseling. But when you know the Bible, you know that it is full of a lot of those types of endeavors. That's right. The conversation between David and Nathan that was read, who read our scripture this morning, by Deacon Aldrich, uh, is an example of a therapeutic conversation. Uh -huh. David had committed a terrible sin. Uh -huh. He had committed murder. Yes. Oh yes, it was not his hand, but it was his mind that devised it. Oh yes, it was not his hand, but it was his plan. It was his hand that signed off on it. And so uh, he managed to bury it. He murdered a man, married his wife. Are y'all listening to me? He murdered a man, married his wife, and then had a baby. That's right. And uh, he had uh, almost actually forgotten about it. David was so powerful, everyone knew what he did. Everyone knew it was wrong. But people were scared to tell him the truth. Right. Kind of like somebody we had in this country that had orange hair. Yeah. Everyone was scared of him because he made it known that I'll get you. I'll, I'll come after you. I'll punish you. And so people were scared to tell him the truth. Can I go ahead and talk? Oh, but anyway, David was scared and he was going about his business having covered up what he did and the consequences. And so Nathan came to him and he said, listen, he said, I want to tell you a story about something that happened. David said, what happened? He said, a man uh, had a little lamb that he loved. And he lived next door to a rich man that had all kinds of flocks and herds. And the rich man had some friends over. And instead of him killing his own lamb, he went and took the poor man's lamb and killed him and used that. That was all the poor man had. David said, what? This happened in Israel? I'm not letting it go down like that. We don't have that kind of stuff here. say you are the man uh, for you came and took the only thing that Uriah had which was his beautiful wife Bathsheba God bless you gave you women gave you compromise gave you victory gave you the kingdom and you when it took the only thing that man had took it and murdered him and covered it up but God sees your sin that's right mm, and this event of this therapeutic conversation broke through the cloud in David's mind. It broke through the cloud in David's heart. And he realized that he had sinned. And then if you go to Psalm 51, he said, wash me and I shall be clean. Purge me and I shall be pure like the driven snow. He realized, he begged God, don't take your Holy Spirit from me. He realized against thee and against thee only have I sinned. It wasn't just Sheba, wasn't just Uriah, it wasn't just the baby that died. It was a sin against God. And it was not until Nathan came with a therapeutic conversation, a helpful conversation, that David was able to see us. Thank you. Well, this conversation between Jesus Christ and the woman is another example of a therapeutic conversation. Uh, it's not necessarily therapy. The Bible doesn't call it therapy. But it is therapeutic because he helped her. That's right. The woman winds up after talking with Jesus saying, come see a man that told me all I ever did. That's right. I want to ask you as a Christian, have you ever told somebody to come to see Jesus mm. because of what Jesus has done for you? Mm -hmm. well, anyway, that's another sermon. The woman at the well said, come see a man. This is what she said. She said, he told me all I ever did. Mm -hmm. Now when you go back and read the conversation, Jesus doesn't talk about her hometown. Mm -hmm. Jesus doesn't talk about her teenage years. Jesus doesn't talk about her family. Jesus doesn't specify the five husbands. 
All he did was told her, go get your husband. She said, I don't have one. Jesus said, you got that right. <laughs> the person you living with now wants your husband. That's right. That's all he said. But when she went back to the town, she told the people, this man has told me all that I ever did. Oh, help me, Holy Ghost. Help us. Look at your neighbor and say, don't let the devil put you to sleep. They're going to sleep over there. Oh, help me, Holy Ghost. Help us. How could this be? How could that statement encompass everything she ever did? Jesus, as the divine therapist, told her about the essential pattern of her life. Jesus, as the divine therapist, does what all therapists do. The therapist, by learning about the events of your life, yeah. they learn about your pattern yeah. that causes your mental distress. Come on. Because the event includes the background of your life. Yes. We were all born in a certain place to certain people yeah. in a certain race mm -hmm. with a certain gender and a certain body shape and a certain appearance. Oh, can I go ahead and talk? Mm -hmm. We were all born with a certain personality, a certain intelligence, certain physical characteristics, and the events of our lives shape us. Yes. The events of our lives include things that happen to us. The events of our lives include things that were done to us and things we did to others. The events of our lives include things that we did and that we did not do. The events of our lives include a pattern that has defined and shaped us. Okay. What Jesus Christ told the woman at the well was the essential pattern of her life. Mm -hmm. He said, well, I know where you came from. Mm -hmm. He said, I know what was done for you and what was done to you. He told her, I know what you did and what you did not do. And in this one summation, he told her the motivation for all of her actions in life. Now that would have been enough right there. But he was telling her more. Because you see, when you go back and you read this, you'll find out that Jesus made the disciples stop at the well uh -huh. and go buy some food. That's right. And he sat there and waited for the woman. Uh -huh. He knew, the Bible said he had to go through Samaria, but it didn't say he had to stop at the well. That's right. He stopped at the well because he had a therapeutic appointment with this woman. All right. And by meeting her at the well, he was telling her, I know what you thirst after. I know what you are hungry for. I know the deep need that is in you like a well down in the bottom of your soul. Now that would have been enough. But then he was telling her the main thing. I know what you were seeking in all of those six men in your life. That's five husbands plus one you're living with now. I know you're looking for a future Messiah to fulfill all your longing with deep knowledge of spiritual things. But what Jesus was telling her, listen woman, you don't have to wait for a future Messiah because the Messiah is standing right here in front of you. When he was telling her, baby, the six men that couldn't satisfy you, don't worry about that because you got the seventh man. And the seventh man that's standing in front of Feel the longing of your very soul. Come on, preach, Pastor. Mm -hmm. yeah. This was a therapeutic conversation. Somebody said therapeutic conversation. Therapeutic. See, y'all ain't talking to me. Somebody said therapeutic conversation. Therapeutic. Can I talk to y'all for a few moments? Can I be therapeutic just for a few moments? Can I tell you that the same Jesus that talked to her is the same Jesus that's here right now? The same Jesus that met her at the woman at the well arranged to meet you here right now. And I want you to listen to Jesus because he's saying to you today, I know where you came from. He's saying to you today, I know your limitations. He's saying to you today, I know what was done to you. He's saying to you today, I know your flaws and your failures. I know what you did and what you didn't do. I know what you thirst after. I know what you're hungry for. I know the deepest need down in your soul. Yes. Listen to the divine therapist, the Lord Jesus Christ. He's saying this to you and I today. He's saying your healing is not 
in the people that you thought it was in. Yeah. The satisfaction of your life is not going to be satisfied with the people you've been chasing after. Uh -huh. But the health of your mind, your body, and your soul is not coming in the future Messiah. Because the Messiah has already come and the Messiah is here right now in spirit. Jesus is saying in this word that's being preached right now is something healing for you right now. In this word, in this moment is the realization that Jesus is here for you right now. And if you can believe it and receive it, hallelujah, your healing is going on right now. Oh, somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Somebody shout glory. Hallelujah. Listen, 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 listen. The woman was told by Jesus, he said the I am, I am. is the one speaking to you. Uh -huh. And I want to tell somebody right now, the I am, hallelujah, is here to heal you. Yeah. Look at somebody, it's a neighbor. Yeah. It's healing time. Yeah. Look at somebody else, it's a neighbor. Yeah. You don't have to wait for tomorrow. Because in 4 and 26, Jesus says, the I am is speaking to you. He was invoking the sacred name of God from Exodus 3 and 14. When God told Moses, when Moses said, what is your name? God said, I am that I am. I am what I was.
Jesus. Lord, sweet throne. 